Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about finding the minimum of average variable costs. And I'm just going to split the video roughly into two. In the first part of the video I'm going to describe the theory uh, behind the result that I'll use that is the marginal cost function and I've drawn one here or a typical kind of marginal cost curve here marginal cost is MC uh, it intersects average variable cost that's AVC at its minimum and this result really means that in order to find the minimum of average variable costs we just need to find our marginal cost function and our average variable cost function and then set them equal to one another. Once we do that, we're going to, well, we can solve for the quantity associated with that intersection. Uh, and I'll just name that kind of Q min here. Uh, and we can also find that level, that average variable cost uh, where it's minimized uh, by substituting that quantity back into either marginal cost or average variable cost. So in the first part of the video, I'll explain why we get that result. And in the second part of the video, I'll go through a practice problem. And I'm going through a practice problem simply because typically in my experience, uh, when you get problems like this at, at the first year university level, your curves don't look like this. They look a little bit different. And so I'll just go through one of those problems in, in the last part of the video. You can check the description for the chapters uh, if you want to skip to any particular bit. Great, so if you're still with me, in order to understand why marginal cost intersects average variable cost at its minimum, uh, really we just need to appreciate a general property between marginal stuff and average stuff. So I've got two situations here. They haven't got anything to do with costs, but I'm thinking about uh, your marginal grade for different courses that you take. And by marginal, I just mean the next or the additional uh, and your average grade across all of the courses that you take. So here in situation one, I've got three courses. Uh, for the first course, your marginal grade, so your grade for that course is 80. That's what you get, that's a great, a great grade, well done. For the second course, uh, your marginal grade is 70. And for the third course, I'll, I'll fill it in in a sec. If we wanted to find the average grade, you know, once that you've completed the first and the second course, all we would need to do, and I'll just do this here, is that we sum up the two grades, it will be 80 plus 70 divided by two. We've got two, two courses. Uh, and this will be equal to, well, this is 150 over two, so equal to 75. So that would be your average grade uh, if you just took two courses. Now let's imagine, and I'll get a different color, that you took a third course, and let's just say that you got 60 for this course. So you didn't do as well, um, but you still passed, so that's still excellent. Um, and what I'm going to think about is what happens to your average grade once you add that third course into the mix. And the idea is that because this marginal grade was lower than the average, actually this marginal grade is going to pull that average down. So let me just draw an arrow and I can calculate the kind of revised average grade now that you've done that third course. Well, that's just going to be equal to it'll be 80 plus 70 plus 60 divided by three. We've got three courses now. Uh, and this is actually equal to 210 on three, uh, which is equal to 70. So our average used to be 75. And then as a result of this new marginal grade that have, has come in, and it's lower than our average, uh, our average has now dropped. It's gone from 75 to 70. And this result is actually can be generalized to all things marginal and average. If your marginal is less than the average of whatever thing you're, that you're measuring, it could be grades, it could be weights, heights, uh, costs, this is going to reduce or drag your average down. So your average decreases. And so that's the general result. If your marginal observation is less than your average, your average will decrease. Now let's think about a situation two. And in situation two, we have an identical situation uh, in situation one for the first two courses. The marginal grade for the first course was 80 and 70 for the second course. And this means that if we took an average, that we would get an average of 75, just like we did in the first situation. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to think, well, what happens if, if in that third course, you do really, really well? Let you say you, do, you did excellently and you get 90. Uh, so that's your marginal grade. And in this case, 
the marginal grade 90 is higher than the average. So what's going to happen to your average? Well, I take the average by adding up all of my marginals and then dividing by the number of observations. So we have 80 plus 70 plus 90 uh, divided by three. We've got three courses. We've completed three courses. And this is actually equal to 240 over three, which is equal to 80. So what's happened? Our marginal grade, that grade for that third course, uh, is greater than our average, and this has pulled our average up. So that's the second kind of general result that we need to appreciate here. If marginal is greater than the average, the average will increase. And what we get from these two observations is actually an explanation for this diagram here. Let's have a look at our marginal cost and our average cost. All right. Well, in this section, you can see our marginal is lower than our average. You see the marginal and I'll just chase it out. The marginal is lower than the average. And what's happening to average? Marginal is lower than average. Average will decrease. Do you see that? So in this section here, where marginal lies below our average, our average is going to be decreasing. Let's think about this section here. Here, our marginal is above our average for these quantities. And our average is, well, we said if marginal is greater than average, average will increase, right? So if, if marginal is below average, average is decreasing. If marginal is above average, then average is increasing. And it follows from this that the point of intersection of these two curves, marginal cost is equal to our average variable cost. So it's neither below or above. This is exactly the turning point where our average goes from decreasing to increasing. So it's, it's exactly the minimum of average variable costs. So that's the explanation for why we have this relationship. If we want to find the minimum of average variable costs, uh, all we need to do is set the marginal cost curve equal to average variable costs uh, and do our calculations from there. So armed with this understanding there, let's have a think about our practice problem. Here we have a total cost curve uh, equal to 104 plus 2q squared plus 4q. If we wanted to find the minimum of our average variable costs, if our firm faced this total cost function, uh, what we need to do is we need to find average variable costs. We need to find marginal costs and then we can set those two functions equal to one another. Now our average variable cost is just going to be the variable cost component of our total cost. So that's any part of total cost that has Q attached to it. So that's this point here, this, this is variable cost. So two Q squared plus four Q, but we average divided by Q. So this is two Q squared divided by Q is two Q plus four Q divided by Q is four. So that's our average variable costs. Our marginal cost is just the derivative of our total cost function with respect to Q, which is equal to the constant will drop out. The two comes in front and multiplies the two. So uh, four Q and here um, this will be Q to the power of zero. So plus four. So then what happens if we put these two things equal to one another? Well, we would get 2q plus 4 is equal to 4q plus 4. Take away 4 from both sides. We get 2q is equal to 4q. What's the only quantity where that's true? Quantity is equal to 0. And this is what I was kind of talking about um, at the beginning of the video. Often our practice problems will give you a total cost function, which is quadratic. So at the highest power will be two. And what you'll get is a linear marginal cost and average variable cost function. So it looks something like this. I'll draw it out. Average variable costs is a straight line. It's intersect on the cost axis is four. And it has a slope of two. And it's just a straight line like that. And I'll just put slope is equal to two. I'll put M is equal to two, M is the slope. Our marginal cost, again, a straight line, uh, four Q plus four. So the cost axis intercept is again four, uh, but its slope will be four. So it has double the slope of our average variable cost function. And so once you draw these cost functions out, it looks something like this. And the intersection is indeed minimum of average variable cost, it's, it's kind of its lowest point, uh, is where Q is equal to zero. And a lot of 
sometimes students get confused about this because we most often associate the minimum of average variable costs with the firm shutting down in the short run. And the argument is, well, shutting down just means producing zero, but they would already be producing zero anyway. And kind of in addition to this, you know, this diagram looks a lot different to, to this diagram. I do have another video which explains the cost curves, you know, why we would draw them in this shape. Usually when it comes to our practice problems or our exams, we only really use the quadratic because anything more than that is kind of is computationally difficult. Um, so that's why you often get these simpler versions where you come up with these linear examples. But in these cases, when we do have these cases, you just apply the rule as is, right? You just apply the rule, you just do your standard um, computations uh, and you answer the question. So the minimum of AVC is equal to four and that occurs when Q is equal to zero. Uh, and you would say, if you were applying this to a perfect competition question, uh, the firm will shut down in the short run if price is less than four. So that's it, a quick video today. I hope that that helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are keeping safe and happy.